In part one, we looked at a chronological series of ancient maps that suggest at least two major geological upheavals and topography changes to the United States. The first sometime in the early to mid 1600s and the second in the first decade of the 1800s. I know, I know, we would have been told about this. Our kids feel the same way about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Objective and subjective reality can often be two different universes. Anyway, we touched on the possibility that a Yellowstone eruption may have taken place around the early 1800s, along with a crumbling part of a mountain range 100 miles south of it, which freed and spilled a colossal ancient lake known as Conibus, creating the Great Salt Lake, the Grand Canyon, and all of the geological destruction of the Southwest. We are left with the glaring question, if these events occurred, how and why? It might seem that the comet records of those centuries is an odd place to look for such clues, but as it so happens, they reveal incredible evidence of almost supernatural electromagnetic atmospheric phenomenon, comet appearances, meteors, plagues, disease, supervolcanic eruptions, and major earthquakes of almost biblical proportions happening worldwide in exactly those two time periods. Our first question is, do comets, plasma discharges, and electromagnetic atmospheric anomalies have any correlation with superquakes and volcanic eruptions? Why, yes they do, Bob. Thanks for asking. But rather than do our nuts in with the pontificating mumbo-jumbo lingo of the National Academy of Sciences and the AGU-100 Advanced Earth and Space Scientists, we'll leave links for those of you nerdy types interested in the details. To sum up in semi-understandable language for the rest of us, basically studies were done in the Izu Island region of Japan which confirmed the existence of SEMS, or seismoelectromagnetic effects, which is a sciency term for physical, electric, and magnetic field disruptions, which happen a month before major magnitude 6.0 earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which build in intensity and culminate to a peak just hours before these quakes and eruptions. There seems to be a which came first, the chicken or the egg debate in the scientific community. Are the earth changes below causing the magnetic and electrical field changes above before these events or the other way around or both? Whichever it is, the correlation definitely exists. Could comets and electromagnetic atmospheric phenomenon from above affect seismic activity below? Before we blow our minds with the year 1816, known as 1800 and frozen to death, the infamous Napoleon's Comet of that time, and the New Madrid quakes of 1811 that decimated five Midwestern states. Let's go back to the late 1500s through mid-1600s and have a look at the freakish phenomenon going on at that time, not just in America, but all around the world. 1582, Comet, Earthquake near Lima, a tempest or violent windy storm in May. 1583, earthquake in England. Not London, the whole of England, the plague sets in. 1586, comet again. Earthquake in Lima again. Plague in Turkey, locusts and plague. 1590, comet. An earthquake shook Europe and also the Azores. Europe? All of Europe? What kind of event shakes all of Europe? There was a plague in Finland and pestilence. 1593, Comet, Earthquake in Persia, Severe Winter in 1594. Pay attention to these severe winters in relation to these patterns. Their relevance will become apparent soon enough. 1597, Comet, Pestilence and Great Plague in England. Cannons were fired and aromatics burnt to shake and purify the air. 1599, Comet, Plague in Italy, Portugal, and Spain. 1600, Comet, Earthquake in Italy, Pestilence everywhere that scourged Europe for some years. 1607, Comet, Great Atmospheric Commotions, here we go. 
Swell of the ocean and rivers, sea levels rising, floods, Great Lakes, anyone? A winter of uncommon severity followed all over the world. The whole world? Was this Halley's Comet? 1609, Comet. Another earthquake at Lima. Eruption of Mount Etna. Plague. Sailors seized with calenture, which is a delirium normally suffered in the tropics. Electromagnetic interference of brain function, perhaps? 30 dead bodies in one day thrown overboard in Sir Thomas Gates' fleet bound to Virginia. Dead from what? Delirium? Neptune, the god of the sea, and Jove, which is Jupiter, the god of thunder in the sky, were on bad terms all year. This means fighting or catastrophic weather. So rough were the waters that it was many years before sleek Panope, who is a female spirit of the seawater that accompanies Poseidon, would gamble on the level brine again, meaning there were no calm seawaters for many years. 1612. Comets. Storms at sea laid 2,000 dead carcasses on the English coast, 1,200 on the Dutch shore. A plague in Constantinople destroyed 200,000 people. In summer, Europe was covered by grasshoppers. It is a known fact that electromagnetic waves affect grasshoppers and locust swarms. EME complexes are fitted to vehicles and unmanned aerial vehicles today just to combat flying locusts and transit. So what drove them all into Europe? 1614, comet suspected eruption of Mount Etna. 1618, two comets. Earthquake in Retia, Switzerland. Hurricane in Bermuda. 1620, comet followed by cold winter, violent storm and tides. 1625, Comet, eruptions of Hecla in Iceland and Palma in Spain. 1632, Mount Vesuvius lost 200 feet of altitude by burning, earthquake of Naples. 1633, Comet again, another severe winter afterwards. Etna is volcanic for five years and an earthquake in London. 1635, Comet, another eruption of both Vesuvius and Etna in earthquakes. In America, a memorable tempest. Now how windy and violent does a storm have to get to be memorable 200 years later? 1638, earthquake in Calabria destroyed 30,000 lives, also extensive earthquakes in America in June. America? Not Delaware, but known America? Tremendous storms of wind in autumn. In 1639, swarms of small flies on the sea near the coast. Like all insects, flies are affected by electromagnetic fields. 1640, a remarkable meteor in America at great elevation early in the morning. Very curious meteors seen at Boston the following years. Curious, as in not expected. 1647, Comet. Earthquake in America. America? Where? All of settled America? Plague in London and in America influenza was general and very fatal. 1652, another comet. Earthquake in South America, another eruption of Mount Vesuvius. 1658, earthquake in America. 1661, comet and earthquake the next year in America, followed by the Great Plague of 1665. Aside from putting the modern-day man-made climate change hysteria into a different perspective, I don't know about you, but I find it strange that comets, earthquakes, volcanoes, plagues, strange brain diseases, raging floodwaters and seas, and electromagnetic-affected insect swarms seem to all get out of control around the same periods of time together. Coincidence? Perhaps. But what we should be asking is, with all of this electromagnetic and geological turmoil going on worldwide, is it possible or so far-fetched to suspect a combination of or even one major cataclysmic event around the same time may be the reason the maps look so drastically different afterwards? Perhaps causing the formation of the Great Lakes and turning California into an island? Let's jump forward to where things get really crazy. 
We're talking Twilight Zone crazy. Yes, you've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Seventeen eighty-six. The early part of the year was cold. Aurora Borealis, April 29th. A flood, November 5th. This is not impossible, though it is very rare. The scientific explanation for Borealis is that charged solar particles interact with the Earth's magnetic fields and collide with gas particles that cause the characteristic glow. They tell us this happens at the magnetic poles constantly because the magnetic fields are stronger there. They are usually green due to collision with oxygen particles, but exciting different gases can produce different colors. What is interesting is that suddenly Borealis will start to be seen in England and the United States leading up to the 1812 event. So what was going on with the magnetic fields on the Earth at that time for this rare phenomenon to start being seen more often? 1787, Comet Aurora Borealis on St. Paul's Day. 1788, two comets. The autumn was very tempestuous and hurricanes in the West Indies. On the 17th of October, a remarkable meteor in Connecticut. 1788, a singular halo in Connecticut, 28th of May. On the 27th, there had been fine auroras again. A remarkable black spot was seen on the sun the 9th of November, and there was famine in America. Earthquakes closed the year, and a remarkable cloud, light, and storm. 1790, three small comets, earthquakes in Africa, and in 1791, an earthquake felt at Lisbon and Aurora Borealis in October 1790. 1792, another comet, earthquake felt in Perthshire, and a comet again in 1793. 1794, right after this, the crops fail in England. 1795, Mount Vesuvius broke out in flames on the 15th of June, and in America, a species of headache with vertigo became epidemic. He says no bleeding, opiates, nor aperients, which were constipation drugs, had any effect on these headaches. Meteor, September 9th. Could this be an electromagnetic atmospheric disturbance causing this strange epidemic? 1797, two more comets. Hydrophobia epidemic in Rhode Island? Suddenly everyone is afraid of water? Do they have rabies? What on earth was going on to affect brain physiology? 1798, Comet, a severe winter followed. There's that cold again. 1799, two comets, storm of wind and severe early winter. 1800, violent storm of wind, chimneys blown down at Hackney. Floods at Martin Moss. 1801, Comet, much flooding in December, early snowfall and cold winter. Again, Aurora Borealis in September. 1803, Comet and Great Meteor in November. 1804, Comet, Northern Lights on St. Cecily's Day. 1805, two comets and a curious vortex, like a vapor on elm trees, which turned out to be insects. The bugs are going crazy again. 1806, and here is the curious bit. I shall now be more brief in my notes, as the journal from this period has been published already by me in my book on atmospheric phenomenon in 1823. So what kind of atmospheric phenomenon was going on in this period that deserved a detailed section and an entire book on the subject? But I digress. 1807, Comet. 1809, Comet, the cornfield strewn by tempests in September. 1810, Comet. In autumn prevailed a bilious epidemic with hypochondriasis, which is chronic health anxiety. The whole summer had been unhealthy, and get this, the atmospheric electrometers had indicated a peculiar fluctuation of the electricity of the air. Oh, really? The clouds exhibited all the year the most whimsical and grotesque figures, and my aerostatic experiment showed various currents at once. Really, you don't say. 1811, comet with very brilliant tail, the largest seen for many years. 
See my journal for that month in Atmospheric Phenomenon. This comet was visible to accurate observers from May 1811 to July 1812. Electricity disturbed and clouds had very strange shapes. Pestilence in the south of Europe and Asia and another comet recorded. We'll get right back to this comet shortly, dear viewer. For this, I believe, may be our culprit for 1812. Yeah. But it is worthy to note that from this point on in his records, there are annual comets, diseases, and epidemics mentioned through 1834, but suddenly no more strange light phenomenon, no earthquakes, floods, tempests, or volcanic eruptions, with the exception of one earthquake in Scotland in 1817. As we mentioned earlier, there is a correlation between atmospheric electrical phenomenon in the ether and geological disturbances such as earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Could these comets be the cause of all of the aforementioned atmospheric electrical phenomenon in the ether in those time periods, triggering all of the auroras, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, brain disturbances, and even the plagues and epidemics of the time? In the part three finale, we'll revisit 1811 through 1816, the appearance of Napoleon's comet, the wars and revolutions going on in every country on earth at that time, the new Madrid quake that decimated five US states, and the possibility of a major Yellowstone eruption that may have drained Lake Conibus and shifted enough landmass to join California back to the mainland. Stay tuned, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.